This is Algebra 2, Chapter 6, Section 3, in which we will study the square root function and also inequalities involving square roots. A function that has a square root of a variable, that's all it takes to be a square root function. If you have the square root of x, or if you have the square root, like down here, of x plus 6, anything like that makes it a square root function. Sometimes you'll see books call these radical functions. Your book kind of switches back and forth between the two names. So I want to show you both names so that when they use one, you know it means the other as well. If you look in your book on 400, and I would recommend putting this into your notes in some of the blank space on your page here, they give you some of the key features of the, of the basic square root function. It would be handy to have that information for your, for your notes. So if it were me, I would put that on here somewhere for you, for myself. Okay. Our goal first is to find the domain and range of the square root function, square root of x plus 6 plus 3. Well, first, we need to talk about domain. As long as we're sticking to real numbers, we can't take the square root of a negative. So the stuff underneath that square root has to be positive values, or zero. Can't be negative. So x plus 6 is greater than or equal to zero. Subtract the 6 over. And we get x is greater than negative 6. That's the domain right there. The range, we know the square root is going to be a positive thing, or zero. It's not going to be a negative value. Anything zero and up added onto three tells me the range is y is greater than three. If we put in the negative six from the domain, negative six plus six is zero, square root of 0 is 0 plus 3, y has to be bigger than that value. So finding domain and range is pretty straightforward. Now on 401, you're going to find another very useful table that talks about how changing the value of a changes the way the graph looks, changing the value of h changes the graph, and k. Again, this would be another thing that I've got a lot of blank space here on your note sheet for you. I would recommend that you put that information onto your notes because it would be great to have later on. Especially when you're trying to work some of these problems, you can refer back to it and make sure that it made sense. Okay. So we are going to graph f of x equals negative 2 times the square root of x minus 5 plus 3. Okay. First we need to figure out the smallest value in our domain. What would make this equal 0 is x equals 5. And when x equals 5, we have 0, the square root of 0 is 0 times negative 2 is 0, plus 3 is 3. So we have our first point, 5, 3. Now, x has to be values bigger than 5, so I just picked a bunch of values bigger than 5. So I just went straight up the line, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You're going to want several so that you can see how the curve builds. I would recommend having at least seven points, at least for now. Maybe later I'll let you back it down, but for now you really need those points because you don't have the experience to just know what it's going to look like. And then I plugged each one of these values in for x and ran it with my trusty calculator and got the associated values for y. And I'll let you, at your leisure, punch those in to make sure that you get 
those values. If you don't come up with these, let me know so I can help you with your calculator issues. But now I've got my x's and my y's, I'm ready to plot. And I've got these points over here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. Six, come here, point. Six gave me one. Get on there. Seven gave me point two. Close enough. 8 gave me negative 0.5. I guess that 0.2 is not close enough. 9 gave me negative 1. All I'm doing is putting these points where the graph tells me to, or the table tells me to. 10. And then I'm ready to draw my line or not my line, my curve, and it looks something like that, except it doesn't, because it can't go past that point. Okay, this is a rare kind, or not a rare kind, but the first of the kind you've dealt with, where you don't go both ways. You can't go past here. If you try to go into any number smaller than 5 for x, you're going to start getting imaginary, so you have nothing to graph. So this is your fixed end point, that you can't go past it. So make sure you're careful about that point. Okay. Let's deal with one more kind, where we're going to be dealing with square root inequalities. This is going to involve shading, just like we did before. But a lot of times, 0, 0 is not going to be our friend. Because it's 50-50 whether it's going to be in our zone or not. But we can graph this thing. First thing we need to do is find out the smallest x allowed. x plus 2 what would make this equal to 0? x equals negative 2. If we plug that in, we get 0 square rooted. We end up with negative 4. So we have our first point. Now we go up from here. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I just went straight up the line. And then again, like we did on the other one, I plugged into my trusty calculator. And again, I'll let you, at your leisure, punch those through your calculator to make sure you can get those. And again, if you don't get those numbers, check with me so I can help you with the calculator problems. Okay. Now I'm ready to plot. Negative 2 negative 4, negative 1, negative 5, 0, negative 5.4, 1, negative 5.7, 2, negative 6, 3, negative 6.2, and 4, negative 6.5. Now I've got to remember this time that I'm talking about solid or dotted line. I'm talking about a dotted line. So I've got a dotted line there. I don't really like that dotted line. I was trying the dotted line graph or on the smart. Mm, 
Not a whole lot better, but we'll go with it. Okay. Now I said before, zero, zero is not always our best friend. So I'm not even going to use zero, zero. I'm just going to look at this. Things that are smaller than are below. So I'm going to shade below that line, that curve. And I'm being very careful not to go past here. Because I can't go past here. So it's just this region down here. And as always, your shading can be just as pretty as mine. But it all hinges on this. This is less than, so it's smaller than, so you shade beneath the graph. Had that been a greater than, we would shade above the graph. But we still wouldn't go past this line. So I'm very careful not to go past it. And so what did we do? We dealt with square root functions. We found the smallest value that we could use. In this case, it was negative 2. What made that 0? Then we went up from there. And then we plugged into our calculators to get these values, plot them, connect them, either dotted or solid, and then shade as necessary. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in to ask, and we'll see you in class.